All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Hannah Cropo, and I'm the content marketing manager here at CertiPort. We're so happy to have you joining us for our fifth month of Microsoft webinar, our third one this week. So if you've been with us all week, congratulations. You've made it to the end of our curriculum week, and we're really excited to have you here. Uh, this session is being recorded, so we ask that if you have questions, feel free to drop those into the chat or the Q&A feature, and we'll make sure to address those as we go throughout our presentation today. Now, today our topic is preparing for the Microsoft Certified Educator exam, and we have an amazing veteran educator and current CertiPort Customer Success Manager here with us to be able to talk more about this program. So, Jennifer, I'll let you introduce yourself before we dive in. Uh, hello, everyone. This is such an exciting thing to do. Um, I'm coming to you live from my son's old bedroom uh, turned home office. Um, to introduce myself, there are a couple Kentuckians on there, so excited to see that. But um, I'm a Kentucky business educator uh, for 27 years. I tell everyone that I'm an anomaly. I, I taught in the same district, same building, same classroom, for all 27 years, you know, maybe they couldn't get rid of me. I don't know, but um, <laughs> but that was my home. Uh, and so when I retired, I missed that more than you can imagine. But um, I'm enjoying my role at CertiPort now, which, you know, to, to put it just in a little can, what I do is my, my job is to be in the teacher's corner. And I speak their language. And um, I love working with teachers who are doing what is so passionate to me changing kids' lives with these certifications. So that's that's my role at CertiPort. I also serve as the president of the Kentucky Business Education Association. So I love uh, working with that leadership team here in Kentucky. We have a really strong force um, of business education in Kentucky. And so a couple of hats that I wear. And then I'm also mom and I'm, I'm a grandma and I have two basset hounds. So I'm a dog mom too, <laughs> but um, I'm enjoying my retirement, which lasted this minute this long and now i'm happy to be here with sort of and i'm happy to talk about something that um, i did myself a few years ago and um, it served me well and i hope that i can inspire a few of you to think about getting your microsoft certified educator wonderful well we know of course that you certified many many of your students over the years and we know obviously because you're here that you think um, certification is valuable for students why do you think a certification like this is also valuable for educators? Well, I think as a teacher, you know, we're never off. We're always on. I don't care if I'm at the grocery store or a ball game, wherever I'm at, I, I'm teaching. And so one of the things I loved doing when I would get sort of, you know, like Excel or mm -hmm. whatever I would, I always posted on my wall, my certificate. And when I earned my Microsoft Certified Educator, I was proud to put that in a frame and post that on the wall in my classroom. And it was a conversation piece for my students. Not that I'm putting up there to go, oh, look at me. I think we're always on in the world of modeling. We model for our students. By the way, we dress, the way we act, the way we interact with adults, we're always modeling. And I think perhaps one of the best things we can do is model for our students lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. You know, we we chose business education, technology education as our career, okay? And um, some of you listening may remember something, I don't know, called Lotus 123. Now, Hannah, you're too young. Don't even laugh because you don't <laughs> even know. But, you know, Lotus or Microsoft Works. Microsoft you know, Word Perfect. Who remembers Word Perfect, right? So the minute I would get those mastered, they would change. And the minute someone would put something in a textbook regarding what I was supposed to be teaching, the cutting edge technology of business. Oh, I see somebody say DBase. That's right. DBase 4. <laughs> I love it. But anyway, the minute I would conquer it, it would become obsolete. The minute the book would print it, it would be obsolete. But that is one of the most exciting parts of why I love to business education, because, you know, if I were a history teacher and I love history teachers, I love I love history. But the Civil War hasn't changed. Once you figure out how to teach the Civil War, you know, it hasn't changed. All mm -hmm. still there. But if I'm teaching something on doing sorting with database, mm -hmm. you know, it, it changes with the wind. And if I want to 
have my students prepared for this world of work. I've got to stay cutting edge. And so to answer your question, why do I want to be certified with something like this or any certification? I am modeling for my students exactly what they're going to have to do in the business world, in the world of work, to stay ahead. Because if they're not ahead, they're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. Well, I know before we were chatting about some, some educators that you worked with during your career who modeled that lifelong learning perspective for their students. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, some of you from Virginia, I saw some people in there from Virginia, and I have not told Robin I'm going to talk about her. So you, you guys can text Robin and say, Jennifer's talking about you. But Robin has, she taught, she's retired now, but she taught for, I think, 45 years in Virginia, just a, a huge proponent of um, professionalism. Mm. She was on all the boards, president of everything, because she, again, modeled that for students. But one of the neatest stories that she told me about her lifelong learning, and everyone that's listening, think about what you do. We go to these conferences, and we come home, and we have the lanyard and the name tag, okay? And sometimes it's the pen, you know, whatever, but we have our name tag. And I don't know about you, but I, I used to give them to my kids to play with and they would play school with them or whatever. They ended up being a dog leash, whatever. Okay. <laughs> but I just threw them away. Robin kept every lanyard name tag from every conference she ever attended. And she kept them on a wall above her chalkboard area. She said, I, I never saw it, but you know, she described it to me. And she said every year her students would stand there and they were on display and she would see them go with them and read. Oh, wait, you went to Boston? Wait, here's another one in Boston. Wait, oh, you went to New Mexico? And she would show the kids her travel. But then the conversation would be, well, why did you go there? And she would tell them, oh, at that conference is the one where I learned blah, 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 blah. Or I learned this. Or, oh, that's a conference why I, when I did my, you know, big speech on my master's degree or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she modeled for her students that education doesn't stop once you get the job. And I love that about her. And I think these certifications are kind of like those name tags. You know, we model that for our students. So let's dive into it. And I, I love that mentality that lifelong learning is something that you have to model for your students. So what is then the Microsoft Certified Educator Certification? Okay. Um, and again, I will tell you, um, I was at a conference and. Uh, I had taken all the certifications that were being offered at that particular conference. I had passed them all, but there was this new one, MCE, the Microsoft Certified Educator. And I am a big proponent of Microsoft certifications. Um, I'm so old, and some of you in the chat can tell you know, how old you are as well. We used to call it mouse, the mouse certifications. Mm -hmm. So I slip back into mouse all the time. But anyway, I thought, well, I teach Microsoft. I'm a big proponent of the MOS certifications. Why don't I go ahead and just sit down and see what I can do with a Microsoft certified educator? So I was at this conference and they said, well, here's some practice tests. You know, Certiport had these practice tests. So I sat down for about 45 minutes and I did some practice tests. And then frankly, I just dove right in. I sat down and took the test. And let me tell you, it was not a cakewalk. <laughs> but, but think about how when we go into our classroom, you know, we, we use all those things we learned in college, mm -hmm. all those things we learned in our teacher education programs, but, but we may change the wording. But when you take a certified teacher test, they're going to have words like, you know, rubric every five seconds. They're going to have words like, um, you know, uh, pacing, all those things that we know we do, we do them. It's autopilot. Teachers are on autopilot with lesson plans. We know how to do that. But we may have forgotten what they're called or the, the new term, you know, one day they're called objectives. The next day they're called learner outcomes. Well, then when the wind blows, they're called learning targets, you know, whatever. So the test was interesting to me and in that I had to pull back into my teacher education training and think, okay, what, what word did, oh, in 1997, they called it mm -hmm. that. That's what it is now. And I knew it. Mm -hmm. And I passed the test. And let me tell you, I was really proud of that certification. So what is the test and how did I take it? I took it kind of cold, but 
if I had prepared a little more using all of the, the awesome resources that are out there, I think I would have scored a lot higher. But <laughs> here's what it does. If you're listening and you are a Microsoft passionate person like I am, you know, the business world uses Microsoft programs. Every company I know, every, every corporate person I know uses Outlook for their communication. And they use Microsoft Word. Excel is still the number one you know, program that employers are just demanding that we prepare these kids with. So if you're passionate about that and you're passionate about teaching, this test bridges that gap and it puts them together. And it says, okay, you're passionate about technology and you, you know our programs. Let's see how you are on the teaching end of it. Mm -hmm. And the questions that come in to the test you know, they really do challenge you and you kind of go, hmm, oh, 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 that's what it's thinking because your teacher mentality again just takes over. But that's kind of what the test is. Um, and the format of the test was interesting. I thought, you know, it's 60 minutes, by the way. So it's mm -hmm. a full hour. And the tests, the questions, I mean, you know, they're not just true, false or fill in the blank. I love the fact that, the, the type of questions are sometimes drag and drop, like put these in order. What should you do first? Um, or, what, you know, what, what's the worst thing you could do in this situation? <laughs> or what program, if you're wanting to do blah, 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 which program would you most likely choose to get that done? Mm -hmm. And so I like the fact that it's most likely or what's the best answer or um, drag and drop these. But my favorite part of the test was the lists. And it would have these lists of things and it would say, remove all of the whatever that doesn't belong. And any teacher, you know, as my daddy would say, you know, worth their worth would be able to go, no, 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 no. Um, but again, when I look back on the prep, the prep really does help you prepare for that. <laughs> a lot of mine, I winged, but I love that removing what doesn't belong because any teacher should be able to see that. And mm -hmm. I enjoyed those kind of questions. So in thinking about the topics then that those questions covered, what were the main elements of teaching that were brought into the exam? Um, well, I, I, I'm going to refer to my list because I can't remember them just off the top of my head, but there, there are seven main categories of the objectives, okay? Um, and I'm just going to read them out loud for anyone who's listening, yeah. and some of you may be driving or whatever, um, but it's to facilitate student collaboration. Teachers, how many times do we teach teamwork? We, and I know the fancy word for collaboration, teamwork, right? We do that all the time. All kinds of projects that we do, right? We teach our students how to use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint together. We teach them how to use software strengths and then put them together for this one big project. Facilitate skilled communication. This world we live in is full of digital communication, whether it be, you know, sending an email or uh, doing a PowerPoint on a big presentation screen. We know that that is communication, nonverbal communication, written communication. It's all covered. The next one is facilitate knowledge construction. This is the one, Hannah, that I, I like to call common sense. <laughs> now listen to it again. Knowledge construction. Good old common sense, which... That's a soapbox moment. Sometimes I feel like this world has lost a lot of common sense. But anyway, how to put it all together and have, you know, critical thinking skills behind the scenes. So many times today, I mean, how many times have we all gone somewhere and the cash register is out and we ask kids to count change back to us? They can't do it without a calculator to tell them how much change, right? This test makes us as teachers taking this test critically think about what we would do in our classroom to get the famous DOK, you know, the mm -hmm. depth of knowledge that we all study and know about. Another one is facilitate self-regulation. In other words, as a teacher, what, what, are, what are my boundaries? What are my strengths? My self-regulation. And then the other one is facilitate real world problem solving, real world. And I think so many times, especially with this pandemic, we've had kids that maybe haven't interacted with the real world for a while. And I, I'm not, I don't mean negative, but they, 
they haven't been out <laughs> and the real world is out, right? And so this real world problem solving, we ask them to solve problems. If you ask any employer, that's really what they want their employees to be able to do. Come to work, do their job. And if there's a problem that comes up, solve the problem. Yeah. Be able to solve the problem. So as teachers, the questions on this test are solve the problem. And I just want to say that we teachers are just natural problem solvers. We we do it so naturally. We know to move, remove, you know, Sally and Harry. They cannot sit by each other. We know that is a problem. Solve the problem. We know how to do that. It's natural. So I thought that was an easy section of the test. And then I like the word innovation. So it's facilitate real world innovation, which is the crux of Microsoft, right? You know, we want to be innovative. We don't want to be teaching Microsoft 2013 when it is, you know, the year 2022, right? We want to make sure that we are advanced on our certifications, but our students are also getting the best that's out there to them as well. And then the next one is facilitate student use of information and communication tools. In other words, can the students, are we teaching the students how to pick the right software to do whatever. So if they're wanting to have you know, a video conference, do they know to pick Microsoft Teams? If they're wanting to, to have some type of uh, visual display, do they know to pick PowerPoint, right? If they're going to do anything with data and uh, sorting, they're, they're gonna use Excel or Access, right? Mm -hmm. So are we making sure our students know how to do that innovation with communications and, and know how to make sure we select the right um, software. And then the last one is use information and communication tools to be an effective educator. It's going to test our ability to communicate. What a concept. <laughs> Teachers are communicators every day. It's like, you know, we're entertainers, we're, you know, we're, we're the cat herders, you know, we do it all, but above all, we are communicators. And this test makes teachers think about how would I best get that across? What's the best method of delivery? So those are the big sections that are on the test, Hannah. Well, I love that. And I, I wanted to call out one thing too, as I was looking at this exam, I think it's such a unique exam. It's not like the other Microsoft certifications. No. So they have a whole separate kind of framework um, that prepares people for this certification. They call it the 21st century learning design, right? Being able to structure your classroom for success um, in the 21st century. So why is it important you think to incorporate those 21st century skills into your classroom? You know, again, I think one of the best things we can do is make sure when our students leave our classroom, they can attack the world of work and be ready for whatever's out there. As teachers, we sometimes can't teach what we don't know. So we have to be prepared. We have to be innovative and cutting edge. <laughs> Thumbs up. Good job. Thank you in the chat. I like that. Um, you know, we have to be prepared. So why is it important that, that we teach these 21st century skills? Just to be frank, we're, we're not doing our job if we're not. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're literally, you know, who's going to lose that battle? The kids ultimately lose. Um, you can keep doing the same old, you can copy the chapter nine test over and over and over, right? But who's going to lose if the chapter nine test is not teaching what the business world is encountering? You know, one of the big things right now, and I'll, I'll get on a little, I'll chase a rabbit for a second, is the digital nomads. Mm. The first time I heard that term was on the Today Show, and I thought, what? <laughs> so I ran out of this room, and I went down the hall, uh, and I listened. And they were talking about these work-from-home people that they can work from Tahiti or a Florida beach or the mountains of Montana, just like I can work in this room right here as long as they have Wi-Fi and, and they get their job done. And then the minute they get their job done, they can go out and go hiking or they can go paddle boarding or whatever. And these hotels, the travel industry is really embracing these digital nomads mm -hmm. and they're putting together special packages. We should be teaching our students about digital nomads because 
they're going to be digital nomads. And if we don't know that terminology and if we don't know the technology that those kids are going to need to know to be digital nomads, right? Do you remember when the pandemic first hit and we all were trying to figure out Zoom? <laughs> and we were all trying to, you know, how dare we send our students out into the work world without knowing some of that cutting edge stuff? So this Microsoft certified educator test kind of <clears throat> kicks you a little bit and says, yeah, I, I need to brush up a little bit. It did to me. And so I think that's one of the biggest things we can do. It all boils down to what we can do for our students. Yeah. Well, so for educators who are chomping at the bit, kind of ready to get started and ready to start preparing, what's the best place for them to do that? Okay, um, on our website, if you go to the CertiPort website, and I, I did this this afternoon, because again, any good teacher does her homework. So I was like, I want to make sure I, I know exactly what it looks like today, because it's been a hot minute since I looked at it mm -hmm. the day I took the test. But if you just go to the search bar or go to the certifications and, and go to the Microsoft section, and then underneath it would be the MCE. And there's all kinds of resources that are sitting there and the links are there. And they're all free, which is the best thing that I I would say this, even if I didn't work for CertiPort, but I happen to work for them. So it's a win-win, but we make it so easy for teachers to try to do what they can to stay current. And I love that about this company. We're not going to ask you to, you know, pay for this certification test. And I mean, the prep for it. And I want you to think about what you can do for yourself during your free time. Now we don't have a lot of free time, but um, on the website, there's this, the click for the, um, it's called the Microsoft's Learning Pathway underneath the MCE. And when I looked it up this afternoon, I wrote my notes. There's eight modules. And if you go through all eight modules, now don't let this scare you. It takes seven hours. Now, again, who's got seven hours? None, no teacher's got seven hours, but maybe if you space it out, okay? And you set a goal that you want to take this test by the end of May. I bet, I bet you can find seven hours, right? Or some of you may be one of those, you know, going to just dive in head first and get it done in one Saturday, whatever. But the seat time and teachers know exactly what I'm talking about when I say seat time. Seat time is seven hours, okay? And it breaks it down. And then also, and that's from the Microsoft pathway, but mm -hmm. also there's a CERTA prep, uh, which is powered by Gmetrics, which anybody that's listening probably knows what Gmetrics is, but it's powered by Gmetrics. It's the CERTA uh, prep test sample questions just for this test. Highly recommend setting and doing some of that. Yeah, and we actually had someone drop into the chat with a question about getting access to the CERT prep. So I will just say, we'll be sending out the link to the recording. Um, and I know that a lot of you have been attending other sessions. So if you would like access to CERT prep or would like access to these materials, please feel free to respond to those emails so that we can get you access to that. And I also dropped that into the chat so people can start looking at the full pathway if you guys want to get started. Like Jennifer said, I'm sure no one has seven hours today <laughs> to sit down yeah. and go through the whole thing, but it's definitely worthwhile to get started when, um, when you have a minute. So we've already talked about the types of questions. We've talked about you know the topics that are going to be covered. What would be your piece of advice for all of the people listening? How how do we get started? How do we prepare? Or what advice would you want to share with them? Um, I would say this, um, set a goal. You know, we, we have our students, you know, that's part of project management. When we teach project management with students, we teach them to take, take a big thing and set little deadlines, right? We, we, we teach them that. So set yourself a goal and say, I want to get this certification by blank, right? And hey, again, I'll chase a rabbit. I do that a lot. Sorry, <laughs> Hannah. But <laughs> Most teachers have to have a professional growth goal. Mm -hmm. Their principal makes them every year. I had to turn in, how do I want to grow this year? And mm -hmm. I had to turn it in, you know. So perhaps you want to make your growth goal for 22, 23 to turn into your principal that you want to become a Microsoft certified educator. That'd be a great go growth goal to turn into your administrators. So break it down and say, I'm going to study. I'm going to take these practice tests. And I'm going to try to get this done by whatever, you know, set, set a goal. So that's the number one suggestion is set a goal and then practice with these questions. But then also just to be frank, have a can do attitude. 
have a can do it. I can do this. You know, again, I, I was at that conference and I was like, I can do this. And I kind of should have prepared a little more, but I passed, <laughs> but you know, it was an eye opener for me. So have a can do attitude, spend some time on our website with this um, practice material. And then, you know, I guess the last big thing is make sure you know, whenever you're going to do this, like, where am I going to do it? For example, for my Kentucky friends listening, you know, this summer in July, we have the big ACTE conference at the Galt house in Louisville. So at that um, conference, you can take this test at that conference. So if you're coming to the certified conference in Dallas, and that's a whole other rabbit that I could chase, Hannah, <laughs> but it, let me tell y'all, I've been to lots of conferences that were a waste of my time. You know, you just think, well, I, I got a sub for this. This is why I missed my classes. Cause every teacher knows it's harder to be out of your class than it is in your class. But anyway, mm -hmm. so this summer at the Certiport conference certified is the name of the conference. It's all on the website. It's in Dallas. You can take this test this summer in June. So right there's, you know, maybe your, your conference for your state or this June in Dallas, set that as your goal. Find a venue, find a way to take it and uh, make that part of your plan. I love that you brought that up because that was actually one of the questions that came up in the chat is if people could take this at certified. So I, I dropped the link to certified in the chat as well. So please feel free to check that out. See if that works for your schedule. We would love to have you with us in Dallas in June. It's um, going to be hey. a party. And yes, hey, by the way, is. do you know, you know, they're going to bus us out to a ranch this year. <laughs> We're going to have so time. much fun. Now, listen, so I don't excited. wear cowboy Hannah, I do not wear cowboy hats. I'm sorry. They they just get they give me a headache. So don't ask me to do that while we're there. <laughs> well, good. We'll team up then because I don't I don't know. Okay. So I think we'll I just, be I'll wear something else, but I'm not wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple of questions that I um wanted to address. The first is do you have to be a certified educator to help and have students gain their own certifications? Oh, I mean, no, you don't. You sure don't. Um try to choose my words carefully here. Part of my job is to help teachers who might need just a little motivation, yeah. a, a little push. And I, I talk to them and, and I say to them, well, how, you know, how'd your kids do on the test? Well, they didn't do very well or, you know, their whole class, out of their whole class, maybe two passed, whatever test they're doing. And then I, I, I kind of, I, I watch my words very carefully, but I say, well, what did you, how did you do when you took the test? And then they say to me, oh, I've never taken the test. You know, if you want a train wreck, go ahead and ask your students to do something that you've never done. <laughs> you know, those nights when I would come in late from the ball games and I didn't have a plan for the next day, not that that ever happened. <laughs> and I would, you know, son, hey guys, go to page 55 and, and do that activity give me a minute. And then I would try to sit at my desk 10 minutes. I wanted 10 minutes to kind of get my, my day going. And before every hand in the room is up because I had never done that assignment. And what I didn't know is they, they didn't have that skill. I had not taught that skill. I thought they did, but I had anyway. Mm -hmm. So to answer that question in a roundabout way, if you're asking your students to get certified in something that you're not, that is not a good plan. Mm -hmm. This test, however, is a little different. You can be an amazing teacher doing amazing things and not be Microsoft certified as an educator. But again, it, it boils back to that modeling. If you can just model for your students that you're certified in everything that you're asking them to get certified in, plus you chose to grow in other areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, for example, you know, there's certifications that they're called like project management certification mm -hmm. you may not even be teaching project management in your mind but folks business teachers computer teachers tech teachers we we teach project management every day because mm -hmm. we assign these big project-based learning activities right and we teach them how to handle these projects we're modeling that for them so the answer is yes you can be a very effective teacher and never be mce certified mm -hmm. however it sure would be a great idea because it's going to just make you, it's going to make you have absolutely more, I don't know, 
not value to your students. That's a terrible word to say, but the kids are going to note that you're always pushing. You're always getting better yourself. And I think that encourages them in a long way. Oh, I love that. Okay, another question. How closely does the G metrics or practice materials match the actual test? <clears throat> well, and again, I, it's been probably three or four years since I took it. So just to be frank, I haven't taken it in, 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 a, in about four years, I think. But I will say this. When I sit there and practiced for the short time that I practiced, the questions were drag and drop. The questions were, you know, whatever, whatever formatted. And then when I got on the actual test, they were drag and drop. That, so the format of the test, the look of the screen, mm -hmm. I tell everybody, you know, when I go into Kroger and they have moved my cream of mushroom soup from aisle four, bottom left, that messes with me, Hannah. <laughs> that is where it should be, right? Mm -hmm. And then, then you get on the sort of port test and you, you've been practicing with all the sort of prep test materials, mm -hmm. the geometrics prep. And you go, you go, oh, wait, this is the actual test I'm on. Yeah, who moved my cheese? That's right, Lori. <laughs> but, you know, when you get on the actual test, you're like, oh, my goodness, the clock is in the same place. This is there. This is. And you know where the cream of mushroom soup is. Yep. So it's very important, I think, to practice before you take this test, because there's a really good relationship between the two. And um, it's not a. It's not exact because that would be valid, right? But it's very, a very close relationship. So I highly recommend the practice. Perfect. Okay. So I think that that pretty much covers everything related to the MCE certification. I see a couple other questions in the chat um, related to virtual attendance at certified, um, how to get access to the exam. Um, how much it costs and all of those questions, I'm actually just gonna drop my email into the chat. It's hannah.davis at pearson.com. Um, we'll be sending out the follow-up email, like I mentioned with access to the recording um, and all that other information. So please feel free to email me for access to our other sessions. Um, any other questions that you have? I know that we have more sessions coming next week. So we're really excited about that. Um, they're focused around our Microsoft Office Specialist Program. We would love to every, have everyone who's in this session attend. Um, so I'll drop that into the chat as well. Please feel free to register for those additional sessions coming throughout the rest of the month. We'd love to have you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We really appreciate you spending the afternoon with us. You're very welcome. Just uh, just remember folks, whenever you're out there and you're, you're bettering yourself, thank you. If no one said thank you lately, you know, I feel like sometimes my dad used to always say that the people that working really hard and doing their job they don't expect a pat on the back but mm -hmm. but they sure do they sure do like it when they get one and yeah. so thank you thank you for attending this session thank you for going the extra mile for your students thank you for bettering yourself and having that lifelong learning attitude it matters and if no one's told you lately I'll tell you well done well done couldn't have said it better myself thank you everyone have a great rest of your afternoon you're welcome. See you later. Bye.